And of course, that, I mean, uh, right now, America's uh, in a terribly politically weakened position. So I think there might be some exploitation of that. Now, look, you're clearly seeing the outlines of the next, you know, if there is a war, and, and Xi Jinping is saying, has, has told his military to prepare for one, if there is, this is the shape of it, right? A, a blockade of the island, just starve it out um, or whatever. How worried is Taiwan? Well, I, I think people here on the whole are deeply concerned by the prospect of a, of a Chinese attack on Taiwan. Although there is, uh, you know, a segment of the population that does believe that China would never attack people in Taiwan who it views, uh, or, you know, who, whose people it views as compatriots. I mean, that said, people here have been living under the threat of some kind of an attack for several decades now. So, you know, there was no panic buying in, in, in supermarkets here. It was a normal day for work and school. Um, you know, there was no crash in the stock market or anything like that. I mean, life did, for all most people here, really go on like normal. But that is not to say that, you know, people here aren't worried. It's just that living for so long under that kind of a threat, you've got to find a way of getting by. And no one expects a war really until it comes. Not They don't really believe it can be true. How prepared is Taiwan for war if it does come? Well, yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's the million dollar question. Uh, I mean, you're going to get a lot of different answers. I mean, we know Taiwan over the past few months has been, or rather a few years, I should say, has been moving towards a strategy called the porcupine strategy, essentially, uh, you know, trying to make itself extremely make it very painful, very costly to attack Taiwan by buying lots of cheap, small, movable weapons that wouldn't be very easily destroyed in the first wave of a Chinese assault and could pick off larger, more expensive uh, Chinese weaponry. But I, I think most of the analysts you'll ask about whether Taiwan has done that successfully would say there's still some way to go on that strategy. Now, I think there is also, you know, some, un some known unknowns to the extent that we uh, don't really know up until at uh, the moment if, that it does happen, if it does happen at all, how the Taiwanese people uh, would react to an attack. Would there be, you know, a, a widespread kind of popular resistance uh, to, to incoming forces or, or would there be a capitulation? That's something you can, you know, conduct polls on, but to a large extent it's something that really is decided in the moment and it can't be really known beforehand. And also there's an extent to which, you know, to the great extent that Taiwan can prepare for yep. an attack, it's also going to be dependent on outcoming forces, because, on outside forces, because, uh, you know, Taiwan's defense budget go. is 10 times smaller, 11 times smaller than, than China's. So it's going to need some kind of military intervention to, to stop uh, an incoming and that force. Depends. So that I really depends think on the West. Taiwan's yeah, best the West strategy is already here. Exhausted. The West is already exhausted in, over Ukraine. It's giving up on Israel. I don't know, Stash. This is all shaping up very, very ominously. Uh, Stash Butler, uh, you've do been doing a great job from uh, reporting from Taiwan. Thank you so much.